Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so uh, I am not uh, uh, claiming any originality. So this is all something I read with uh, Aditya, and uh, just whatever I understood, I'm going to speak. So please correct me if there is something wrong. So, uh, so in this workshop till far, we have seen uh, uh, this is about perfect toy space. Now we are trying to uh, see how to relate with the modular forms, and that we are familiar of uh, some sort of. So you take this in O not of n, so this is, so this is common to 0 mod n, inside is gamma 1 of n, this is inside it, you have this gamma n, Okay, so we have this complex upper half plane, and uh, the point of this correspond to uh, elliptic curve, say tau. So, say tau. And uh, it's a classical, so if you take this, for instance, it is available in diamond Schumann. So, if you take this naught of n, this is your y naught of n. This is, this correspond to the elliptic curves with the cyclic subgroup of order n. modulus are in equivalence and uh, you have a map to this uh, y on f n this is goes with a 1 by n plus lambda tau again certain equivalence and this gamma 1 of n is contained in gamma naught of n that means there is a map like this and you have this y n This is p tau with uh, so we just call it basis of p tau in under certain equivalence. This is everything is over C, and to remind you, this is a elliptic curve, so dimension of p tau is one. So uh, today, what we are going to do is that. <laughs> So, at the level of gamma equals to gamma naught of n, we can be perfectoid. And uh, next time is tomorrow, using something called pi hot state. So, it is already there in with the Shalit stock. So, it's hot state period mapped. We are going to see uh, tomorrow that this is gamma n, we get perfect oil. <clears throat> okay, so what this is your dimension equal e tau equals to 1, and as you it is uh, what Aditya was talking about uh, last time. So, what you want to have this Galois representation if you have modular forms, you want to associate to it Galois representation. And uh, uh, as he has pointed out, if you took, take a uh, imaginary CM field, then this is going to give you a hyper H3 space, and it is a real man dimension three. So we cannot have uh, Galois representations. So what Charles is, is did is the following. So he did every. I am just taking some words. So if you take any, so G it may be some the group that uh, Aditya was talking about uh, <coughs> last time. So if you take this group restriction of scalars from f over q of GL2, so he put it everything, it is what is something called Siegel type. And he generalized everything for dimension eta greater than one. And using this, he has associated a Galois representation to it. So, uh, so now I'm going to, this is a, it is a good to giving us uh, last talk in uh, third day. So we have a good understanding of addicts and perfect earth space. It is already defined by Kedlaya. So you have these schemes, you have these formal schemes, 
and most importantly, uh, today we have several examples by Chitrabhanu on rigid analytic space. This is all of them sits inside a set of attic spaces. And the perfectoid space is a very uh, specific kind of perfectoid space, attic space. So definition, I'm going to remind you for today, Professor Kedlaya has defined this perfectoid space. Definition, perfectoid space is an attic space that is locally Affinoid. This is a spa of R naught. So this R, we need a perfectoid ring. So again, he has defined a lot today, today morning itself. Just to remind you, the main morning, most important property is if you go mod P, you have you are fixing a prime in the whole. Business, you fix a prime P and R naught mod P. This is the power bound, bounded elements of R. So this is, you have this Frobenius and you demand it to be on to. Okay, so uh, let me uh, just uh, draw tables of what is going on here. <clears throat> you have in a topological space level, The algebraic curve. And this is attic space. <clears throat> so you have, you have uh, this, if you fix a prime P, then you have uh, a certain f uh, filtration. So you, uh, this, <coughs> so we have this X naught P, this X naught P square. P. So I have not defined uh, X naught, but this is just a compactification of Y naught defined in that board. So X naught of PQ. <coughs> so what you can get is that you get an algebraic curve. <coughs> over Z. And uh, I'll draw, draw uh, something here. <coughs> So this object, if you look at, <coughs> this is the curve of a Z, speak Z. And if you look at this generic fiber, it have this, this Riemann surface X naught of P here. And over this special fiber, you have uh, two copies of P1, and they intersect at all the super singular points. This is your, this X naught of P. And you can do the same business with x naught p square and keep on doing. <coughs> you can talk about this x naught p cube, but if you go uh, higher up the tower, so then it becomes this, this is not the, the picture I have drawn, this is not there and there are several uh, complication happens. But uh, what they have in the previous course of lecture, what you have, if you look at this x naught p, this attic fiber over there, this is the compact Riemann surface that you have here. And uh, let me remind you what Utshav has talked about. So uh, if you go to the attic world, this attic, you can talk about attic generic fiber. So it is a reminder from, it's a reminder from Utshav's quote. <coughs> we can talk about Attic generic fiber. So what you do is that uh, just okay. So it's there in the board. So you have these schemes. So you put it this this what is in the geometry. So Chitrabhanu told you he's an algebraic geometer. I'm not I, I'm not comfortable with geometry. But the schemes that uh, that is contained there is a fully faithful functor to the attic space. And uh, what is what you have? You look at this x naught. P, you have this attic space, and this is a generic fiber, attic generic fiber, 
And I'm going to define to you today there is something called anti-canonical part of that. It's not p square eta add t canonical part p cube add anti canonical part. And the theorem that uh, this remarkable theorem of Schultz is following. <coughs> Sorry? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, generic fiber, yeah, yeah. So the adding generic fiber, yeah. <coughs> so this theorem that you can five, uh, okay, sorry, I just, uh, this reference for uh, this talk, this, okay, I'm supposed to tell, this is all. Charles's torsion paper. Torsion points on cohomology of locally symmetric spaces. And I'm, I learned this thing from Anna Karyani's notes. Notes. So last uh, talk only, uh, Chitrabhanu has talked about what is an adic space over a field. And this theorem of Schultz is the following. So I just uh, call all this space to be I'm just to replace this, <coughs> as I call P. that not P infinity, that is equals to inverse limit over N of chi naught P power N. This is a perfectoid space over ZP psychotomic. So let me remind you, you take this QP psychotomic, this is just you are attaching all the P power roots of unity, and you are taking PID completion of that. Okay, so I just uh, briefly, uh, so I, this anti canonical part, so I have to define that. So this is the main theorem of uh, this third uh, chapter. This is uh, it's called PID automorphic forms of this Charles's paper, uh, this paper. And using, uh, so then, uh, so. <coughs> Uh, then using this, we are going to prove it for gamma n, you get a perfectoid structure. Yeah. Sorry, I just didn't write <laughs> perfectoid space. Is perfectoid. <coughs> That's it, yeah, sorry. Uh, this is QP cyclotomic. You attach all the peep, uh, P power roots of unity, and you take a PID completion, it's a very big field. And you take a, this A naught is, R naught is for this ZP cyclotomy. <coughs> yeah. Sorry? P or E, yeah, so he's, so, yeah. so he's defining this, this is, sorry. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. okay. <coughs> okay, so, uh, Okay, so let me just, uh, how you can, uh, so I will try to give this, proof is pretty uh, long and pretty involved. I will not, uh, I will just try to see what are the main statements there and how we can prove it. So, yeah, only anti so I define this chi naught to the anti I re erased it, but here it is anti-canonical, all of them parts, are anti canonical parts are there. So when you have this in this, side of the board, it's all anti-canonical part. Sorry? I will define it. That's, that's the main point of today's talk. <laughs> so I'm going to define this. Today I'm going to define what is this, what is this all about. 
Okay, so Adit uh, again talked about uh, certain uh, Shimura curves. I will not get into details of this, but basically this is, uh, I just take, uh, draw this and <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so uh, so you take this. This is your x. This is uh, uh, okay. This is in the attic space level, but we are looking at uh, this very uh, small part where this is ordinary part. X zero is the ordinary part of part. I'm going to define this x. And this is a space where, uh, as, as you know from the heater theory perspective also, this is a part where there is a lift of Hasse invariant is invertible. Let me remind you that means that the periodic valuation of that should be zero. So this is the ordinary part and this is, this Hasse P is zero, sorry, I was just one. And uh, what uh, he did is like, this, this is a theory that is like uh, parallel to the Coleman's theory, so if you, what he did is that he just extended a bit more. Uh, this is I should use the part. <coughs> so this is the part where this Hasse invariant P is greater or equals to P to the power epsilon. He is fixing all this theory. This is like a zero less than equals to epsilon less than one. And you have this Frobenius map. So, uh, so basically, if you want to prove this kind of uh, this theorem, so what you have to have, you need to have this in the uh, level. So there are two things in this thing. One is a topological space, and the one is this. Uh, there should be a map uh, between these spaces as par level which are compatible, and that's what uh, he did. Uh, so in this Frobenius, these are all given by Frobenius maps, and what? Uh, so I'm just uh, in some notation. I'll just come to it. So this is. So this is isomorphic to chi star to the power m. So this is anti-canonical part of that. And this I'm going to define this thing in this talk. So this this is what I'm going to do. So uh, this you have these certain towers of that that extends, and that's how he uh, he proved uh, this theorem. So I'll just uh, I'll just define what is this anti-canonical part. So the rest of my talk uh, I'm going to define what is this anti-canonical part. <coughs> okay. Okay, so I'll just start with, uh, so of course uh, uh, the main point of uh, this theory, this perfect theory is that you have this something in the characteristic P and you want to lift it in the characteristic zero, that is in the Kiran's talk, it is like tilting and untilting. So we have to go to the characteristic P and somehow we have to lift it to the characteristic zero, that's what, okay, so I'll just start with. <coughs> So as you can see, this is defined in terms of Hasse invariant. So I'm going to define this Hasse invariant first. So Venus and invariant. <coughs> so let's take the scheme of characteristic P. Zero, and let's take this A <coughs> spy abelian schemes. Okay, so character of dimension of A to N. <coughs> now we can talk about this pi star of omega S, and you can take this H N. This is your omega U S. This line bundle over S. Yes. <coughs> this is relative dimension, I think. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I think so.
<coughs> okay, so you have this A over S in schemes, and you have this provenance P. So this AP is the pullback here, and uh, you have this A, this is your provenance diagram comments. Now this induces a map from omega yes this is isomorphic to omega so P this is my definition of Hasse mirin Yeah, opposite. No, this is a. This, I think this is Frobenius, right? A to A plus P. I think this. Is, this is Frobenius. Yeah, I know this is like this is opposite direction, but yeah, I think, I think this is fine. So. <clears throat> okay, so this induces this Hasse invariant. So this is. This one. This is the Hasse invariant. This line, uh, this line bundle of uh, this weight p minus one, and definition. Abelian scheme. A over S is ordinary. If has p power in elements. This n is the same as the dimension of the variety, uh, and you can see this is uh, this is what uh, uh, this is what uh, this is just uh, if you take elliptic curves, this is of dimension one, and it's uh, you have this dimension if you take f p bar, so it is either of dimension one or zero. If it is one, it is ordinary, and if it's zero, it is super singular. So it's just the same as what you have seen the, for the elliptic curves, and now I am in a position to. <coughs> So this uh, you have this Frobenius f from e not to e not p, and you have this Varshebaum here. So then this is v composite of f it's multiplication by p. So this is a small. So we can look at this. Uh, okay, so I, here it is just uh, I'm just taking these particular cases of elliptical. So <coughs> so position. Section belongs to this one is vertical if and only if A mod is ordinary. And now this is the definition of the canonical subgroup. So this is just uh, this kernel of Frobenius. So, however, uh, I want to do it. So this is you can do it everything in characteristic p, but I want to do it in a characteristic zero also. So that's that's something I now like to do. But canonical subgroup is just a kernel of the Frobenius. That's it. But uh, I want to do it in a characteristic zero, and that's uh, we have to. <coughs> Going to talk about yeah. This canonical subgroup's definition is the kernel of the Frobenius. Frobenius is defined in okay. So okay. So the, let's. I'm just. Uh, okay, this is a, maybe a bad notation, but this is the category of periodically. Algebra. 
so this is as I remind you this is just you take this all this mu p infinity and you take this PRE completion and I'm taking this R to be somewhere in this CR. <clears throat> okay, so now I have this A over R Abelian schemes. Special fiber. A not over R mod P. <clears throat> okay, so you have this A not over. P and then a not P over R mod P. Let's map like this. So this is going to give you a not P power M. This is G not to zero. And we can look at so I'm just taking the P power here. <coughs> so this is going to cardinal of So this f is a Frobenius, and I'm taking this uh, iterate of this f composite of m times. So this g naught is the kernel of this is Varshebang. This is a map from a naught m a naught. <coughs> now if a naught is ordinary, ordinary that I define. Guys, <coughs> pass invariant of <laughs> P is invertible. Okay, so I'm just erasing this. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> So I look at this, so we are looking at this short exact sequence, I'm looking at this group schemes. And <coughs> so this implies that G naught is finite. Schemes. R mod P. So that implies G naught leaps to a group scheme over R. Now this, then we get a exact sequence M G is to zero. <coughs> so let's call this G. And now let's look at this kernel. Now this is the canonical subgroup. <coughs> so any questions about this? <coughs> this this is the there's a definition of the canonical subgroup. C M is the canonical subgroup. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so uh, <clears throat> so I'll, I have to like make some remarks. So this is just you have this map in the this is everything. This G is in characteristic zero, and you're looking at this AP power M, and this is just a kernel of this Frobenius. So we are in the characteristic zero case. <clears throat> so uh, I would like to make some remarks. So if, so if dimension of A is one, there is elliptic curves. This is the existence of canonical subgroup is Lubin's theorem. This 
Lubin's theorem. And Scott's paper on uh, Scott's notes on periodic model of forms. It is there. <coughs> Okay, so two is the following. If you start with a ordinary schemes, schemes, and you quotient it by this canonical subgroup that I defined here, you are going to end up getting an ordinary scheme, abelian schemes. So that you can see using yeah, that's easy to see. <coughs> okay, so, <coughs> okay, so I, I just erase this. So, uh, what? Uh, any questions? So, so this uh, uh, this is easy to see. You just take a Hasse invariant, and then you can see. <coughs> okay, so what what we are going to do is that if you remember, I have drawn some things so in this board. So these are everything in the ordinary part. Okay. So I, this is like a where this Hita theory lives. Hita theory uh, just says that if you have this T, that's what Aditya was talking about, this T, there is a finitely many components. So there this, the part you have this downstairs, there is ordinary X naught. So there, uh, this, this, this is the canonical subgroup is defined. What shows it is that it, you take this zero epsilon less than epsilon less than one, and you take a small neighborhood around this ordinary part. So there this is over convergence and then there also he proved the existence of this kind of subgroups. Okay, so that now I'm going to define that. <coughs> okay, so now, <coughs> so again I have this assumption is already there in the board, so zero less than equals to less than, less than one. And I have a certain advantage, once you have that, my ring is too big, so p to the power epsilon belongs to Zp cyclotomic because we are working with this <laughs> fill. Okay, so this is not this ring. And there's the lemma that's, uh, again, this is a very spoof. So he wrote it as, <coughs> let's take this A over R our abelian schemes. Scheme with special fiber. A naught over R mod P and uh, assume, so this is an assumption, as an invariant A naught of R mod P is divide P to the power epsilon. Sorry, I just missed a most important part and that's the index and you have to divide by this. <coughs> Okay, for some epsilon less than half. So then this statement says the following, then there exist. In AP power M, this is a closed subgroup scheme such that CM is common to kernel Okay, so there exists a CM, the subgroup, so similar to what you have defined here, which is contained in this AP power M. I'm starting with this in AP power M. There is a closed subgroup such that uh, if you take the CM, the same as kernel of F power M, modulo P to the power one minus epsilon. Yeah. <coughs> if you go mod P, there, there is not mod P, but this particular. And it is very, that's why you have this epsilon less than half. Uh, no, I am just sitting in this, I think. So these are the two group schemes. You can go modulo p to the power one minus epsilon. So these are the group, that, that's what it is. So this, this kernel of f power m is a group schemes, and then the cm is a group schemes. They are same modulo p power epsilon, one minus epsilon. So this is a characteristic zero, but if you go mod this particular, P power epsilon, then they are same. 
Yeah, so that, that. <coughs> so the whole point of this perfect word business, I think, is uh, what I, this characteristic zero and characteristic p. So this CM is in characteristic zero, but if you go mod p power m, it's like same as cardinal of this a, mth power. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so now this is the definition of this uh, e over r. <coughs> Weak canonical. So remember, everything R is the same that CR. This is R belongs to that CR complete uh, flat. Uh, this ZP cyclic algebra. So <coughs> as weak as a weak canonical subgroup, subgroup of level M. If I say in we can talk of over only on the special fiber. A naught over R mod P. We are in the setting of the same setting that I raised here. You have these abelian schemes and look at the special fiber on that. <coughs> hmm. uh, what is the RC in? No, this is A naught. Huh? No, no, I, I, sorry, I, everything is A naught. A naught is a special fiber of A. I, you can talk about Hasse invariant only for the characteristic P thing, right? So we are talking about this here, the characteristic P. No, so here, this CM is in characteristic zero. Yeah, so the existence, the existence of the weak canonical subgroup is uh, achieved. So this is, this is a proof that is required. It's not easy, so. Is there in this third chapter of this uh, paper? So, but it's there's existence of this. We need to assume that. Yeah. P power in one minute is R. There is so modulo our R, right? So here, this is a group schemes over R, and. You, Base change area, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> okay. So now uh, this is all weakly canonical. So please, this is I have this word weak. So okay. So moreover, this is if I have certain p to the power p to the power m that divides this p to the power r that implies c. CM is a canonical subgroup. So this is something stronger than the existence of uh, this weak canonical subgroup. And uh, I need this, okay, so, okay. So I need this because this CM, if you look at this, this, instead of this, you have this P power M, then we have certain advantage. And the advantage is the following. <coughs> So I, I forgot the, my notation was this. This is my notation of this CR. This <coughs> complete flat ZP cyclic algebra, right? And then if you look at this CM of R prime, you have a very nice description, and this is the following: is belongs to uh, a P power M R prime. This is congruent to zero mod. This is an explicit description of this, this canonical subgroup. And this, this is an <coughs> lemma is the following. Let's take this uh, A over R and B over R abelian schemes. <coughs> One, if A has a canonical subgroup, So I want to do it in a tower. Remember, there is a diagram of it's there in the board. So you want to go in a, from P square, I want to go to P cube and higher up there. So we need some in the tower, we need certain uh, control on that. And that is being achieved by this nice lemma. So this says the following, if A has a canonical subgroup of level M, is <coughs> A has So, 
level prime for all prime is equal to m. Okay, so I just it's not fitting in here, so I'm going to write it there. Nothing is there. <coughs> so two, if you take this F A to B, morphisms of schemes, and suppose you have this inside it, so C M. AP power M and BM is contained in B power M. Canonical subgroups <coughs> so that implies C, this F will take this CP power M exactly to DP power M. So this you can prove just from this description I have given in this, yeah, see you. <coughs> okay, so uh, now I will just, so this is uh, pretty uh, nice, I will just give what are the uh, main steps of this proof of this uh, lemma. <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> yeah, Philip. Huh. Mm. Yeah, so if these conditions are satisfied, then yeah, okay. yeah. <coughs> yeah, then it's, then it's fine, yeah. <coughs> so in the, this is in the abelian scheme, the dimension it, so it's not 0 and 1, so there are several super swing, there is a dimension n, right, this is not elliptic, this is like elliptic curves. These are, uh, yeah, so. This is abelian scheme, so this is not always of dimension one. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> okay, so let's let's try. This is a big. This, <coughs> okay, so I don't want to look. So maybe I just. <coughs> So this proof of, this is not a proof, but yeah. <clears throat> so now look, let's look at this G naught, this is A naught M modulo this volume of it. M, this is over R mod P, this is a <coughs> group schemes. So I have certain assumption I was written as a box over here. So this assumption <coughs> this is I call it star. <coughs> you can look at this Lee complex, I'm not defining it. <coughs> G naught is skilled by Seven. And this is a thesis of Lucky Lucy. So there exists a finite flat G over R G mod of P. Okay, and uh, you have this <clears throat> so 
So you have this AP power m. This is a not p power m. This is delta. This is your g naught. This is your r epsilon, and uh, so that implies you lift to yeah. So they exist like this. So. <coughs> So this is just, this is not a proof, but this is the main point of the proof. <coughs> okay, so now I define the, for you the canonical power, canonical tower, and now I'm going to prove, uh, what, define for you what is the anti-canonical part. That's the part that gives rise to the adic space over here. So <coughs> this definition, the subgroup, Group. So this is a part which is just a complement of the canonical subgroups. I have defined for you what is a canonical uh, subgroups, and this anti-canonical uh, subgroup is the part which is just a complement of that. Okay. So subgroup <coughs> D M is called anti-canonical. If DP detorsion <coughs> section C1 is 0. C1 is the canonical subgroup of level 1 I defined there in this board. <coughs> Okay, so this is a, <coughs> uh, this is basically the main condition that defined it. This is just a complement of the canonical subgroups inside this AP power M. And uh, <coughs> to this, we need to have subgroup scheme of order. So I need to define anti canonical subgroup of level M. And this is, sorry, I have to erase this. Mn. So m is a level of this, and n is the relative dimension of the abelian schemes n, a. So I'm starting with, so plus some totally isotropy. I'm not. So this is the, these are the abelian schemes, which is you have this well pairing is going to give you this the definition that Aditya gave. So uh, it is there somewhere. <laughs> so this well pairing is going to give you certain pairing there, and uh, it is going to give a quadratic form. And these are the abelian schemes which are killed by these quadratic forms. This is the total isotropy. So, but basically, main point is this: this anti-canonical subgroup is a subgroup schemes, which is just a complement of the canonical subgroups. Okay. And the main point, what uh, what I, I stood is the following. So, if you if you look at this, people were if you in the PRD automorphic form theory, so people were looking at the canonical part, and the canonical part, if you look at the tower, they do not behave well. So he just look at the complement of that, and uh, then he <coughs> this theory. So so this is <coughs> sorry, sorry. The first assumption of divisibility, you yeah. have uh, weak canonicity, and second assumption, you have canonicity. Canonicity, yeah. So what is canonicity? So if this condition is satisfied, then A is, uh, then there, this is going to give you a subgroup schemes. So this, if A has a, this is a canonical subgroup. No, what what is the canonical? So this is, this is, uh, if this condition is satisfied, then abelian scheme is going to have a subgroup. That is a canonical subgroup. A, this is a subgroup of these p power m torsion points. That's a canonical. I have defined here canonical subgroups. <coughs> so canonical subgroup is a subgroup which, which is just a characteristic period, uh, zero. It is a lift of the Frobenius. 
So the canonical subgroup, you see this is like a modular schemes, is like elliptic curves, is like generalization of that is abelian schemes, and this is a subgroup of that. Uh, there is nothing to do with ordinarity now. This is now this is now this is in the just you fix an abelian schemes over R and you take these special fibers. It is just fix an abelian schemes. And I define these canonical subgroups to be a subgroup which is just this is satisfied. So canonical subgroup is just a subgroup of AP power M. That's it. Uh, that's also a subgroup. That's also a subgroup of that. A subgroup scheme is a closed subgroup scheme. Yeah. <coughs> So if that is satisfied, then a, this A is said to have a canonical subgroup. So that's not always guaranteed. So this, this, uh, there is certain, so this subgroup, this existence of subgroup is not always guaranteed. Right, so uh, if this is satisfied, then only, huh? Uh, it, it, so unique, so this is, uh, I just erase something. So if it is strong, then it is unique because you have this explicit description I wrote down, raised there. If it is strong, so if you, the second part of this lemma says that it goes to unique. So that, that is, so that's why it is not, he first defined weak canonical and then you go into the, this strong canonical. So here when you define it, it is like canonical subgroup. So if you just take, so I'm just using this lemma, it is just, it may not be unique. But however, if you look at the second part of this next lemma I have just stated, so there, there it's like it is going to be unique. So that's why if you take, when you say canonical subgroup, it is a strong canonical subgroup. And because you need to have a uniqueness there. Ah, this is just a definition. If this is a subgroup of D, is, this is just a definition. So there is existence is, is not, it's just a definition. This is just a complement of that. Okay. So this, I, I, okay, so this part, so uh, I, it is, I, I don't know what. So, uh, so this is, uh, as I told you, so this is an addict sparse of this anti-canonical part. <coughs> okay, and uh, so this is, there is certain, uh, uh, th this is like a moduli space, and there is certain, uh, uh, so this is, a certain functor which takes, I'm just going to define this functor, this represents something. So, so if you look at this, the main problem of this, uh, if you associate Galois representation is the following. So as you say that like if you this datum, so if you have dimension three. So what he's doing is that he's putting everything in this single datum. And if you look at this single datum, so there you have this modular description. There is a single uh, uh, modular variety and on that single modular variety, you have modular description. So, so this part, I have just written here, it has a modular description. <coughs> so uh, this is the, okay, so there is a, so I just, for M <coughs> and D, this parameterizes, D, with, <coughs> oh, okay, so with A Abelian schemes, schemes plus B anti canonical subgroup. Okay, <coughs> okay, so uh, now this perfect art structure, he in this way, so you have this. <clears throat> so let me remind you, so you have this So uh, when you have this, I just put in the first line, you have this gx to g tilde x tilde. So when you fix this g tilde x tilde, so then there is a g, just gsp for that, g is comes out, that's your n. So then that's fixed, that's fixed, yeah. <coughs> so, so our aim is to find a gallery representation, that, that's. <coughs> okay, so now you have that, uh, so you have this x, 
this is your chi zero, and this is your. Uh, so this is a whole moduli space. This is like a this part without putting anti there. And this is your chi zero. This is where Hasse invariance lift to the Hasse invariance has periodic. And then this is this is the anti-canonical part. And if you look at uh, these maps that is there, so we have certain bunch of maps over here. But if you push it here, these maps, all of them, they are given by Frobenius. So we have this hot going i one, two, okay, all of them is Frobenius. So if you have a bunch of finite flat group schemes over ZP cyclotomic with, uh, with each of them is a Frobenius, if you go to the infinite level, you're going to get a perfect toid space. So, <coughs> so that's, that's how this is roughly he proved this theorem. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about how he has got it for this whole space of gamma n. That is the first book. Yeah, thank you very much.